Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're finishing up our endgame series. We started out with king and pawn endings, then we went to rooks, bishops, knights, and today we're looking at queens. And actually, as I was preparing for this video, it reminded me of a scene from one of my favorite movies growing up. The movie's called Searching for Bobby Fischer, and at the end of that movie, there's a scene where it's kind of a king and pawn ending that turns into a queen ending. But I'll show you that real fast before we get started. Wow, that movie brings back memories. That was kind of like my story growing up, very similar to that movie. Um, Anyway, for those of you who didn't catch it, this was a position uh, that they showed at the end. And so white captured the knight, and then they kind of just started this pawn race. And white had, you know, calculated he was going to get the queen first. But it doesn't matter because after black gets the queen, he's in a skewer. And so he can't even use his queen. He has to move the king and then loses the queen and the game. So that's what happened if you didn't catch that from... Um, what they were showing with you know the camera angles it was a little tricky to, to see that but kind of a cool way to end the game with a long range skewer like that that wins the queen uh, but anyway let's go ahead and get started so first things first a king and a queen against a king is definitely a win uh, this is a relatively easy checkmate one of the easier ones so make sure if you don't know how to do this go watch one of my previous videos i'll post a link to it you you have to know this this is very common you know you play a game everything's even one person has an extra pawn they push it they get a queen and you end up with a position like this you have to know how to checkmate with the king and a queen against the king if you don't don't watch any more videos until you go and learn that because that is a very crucial skill to have basically you just make a box keep making it smaller until you get to the corner and then you checkmate them watch out that you don't get a stalemate but like i said i cover it in the other video so watch that if you still have questions all right, so here's the next example. This is pretty common as well. So white already has the queen and black is coming this way and is one space away from also getting the queen. And if he's able to get a queen as well, then it's the game's just gonna be a draw. Nobody would be able to win. But if white can somehow stop black from doing that and, and bring his king over to help out and capture the pawn, then white can win. So the question is, can white do that? And if, he's, and if so, how does he do it? And there's a little technique and basically you're going to keep putting black in check so that he can never move his pawn forward as you get your queen into a certain position and then you bring your king over at the right moment so it's easier to just look at an example so the first thing you're going to do is go check right so black can't move his pawn because his king's in check so let's say he goes here he wants to stay pretty close to his pawn but he doesn't want to uh, go in front of it because then he wouldn't be able to move it so then uh, you're going to go check again and notice how i'm bringing the queen a little bit closer right and so let's say he goes here i'm going to do the same thing check so you you see this zigzag maneuver continuing to bring the queen closer while always keeping black in check check he goes here check and this is kind of the crucial position whenever you get check like this uh where it's attacking the pawn as well as the king you force black to make a tough decision because if he goes over here then he just loses his pawn. So he, he, can't, he really can't do that. The only thing he can do is go here, but now he has stepped in front of his own pawn. He can't move it, which means why is that good for you? Well, now you can take that time, the extra move that you have and bring your king one step closer, right? And then he's gonna come over here and you're gonna repeat the process, do the same thing, right? So check. He doesn't wanna go in front of it or you know the same thing, you can bring your king closer. So he's gonna go here and then you go check. He's gonna go here, you go check. And by, by you know zigzagging your queen closer, you've blocked off the square and guess what? He has to go back in front of the pawn again. And now you bring your king one step closer. He's gonna go here again, trying to get a queen. You do the same thing, check. He's gonna come over here, check, check. 
right? We got this position again, and we've seen this before. He has to block, you bring your king closer. Okay, we'll do it one more time. We'll go check, check. If he goes here, just as an example, um, now we've already got it covered with our queen. We don't even have to check him again. We can just bring our king closer. So just as a you know alternate example, and if he goes here, now we can actually bring our king close, and our king stops the square. Even if he gets the queen now, he loses, and uh, you know next move we just take the pawn regardless. So that is the technique uh, to win when the pawn is one square from becoming a queen. Now the interesting thing about this position is that it's only a win for white sometimes, and I say that because this pawn is a B pawn, right? It's on the B file, and this is actually a win if your pawn is on the B or D or E or G pawn. Okay, so B or G pawn or one of the center two pawns, you can win by doing the technique that I just showed you. Same exact thing on with any of those pawns. But if the pawn is a C, an A, an F or an H pawn, you can't win. It's a draw. And you're probably thinking, why does that matter? Like, it's can't you just do the same process? You can do the same thing, but you won't get the same results. Let me show you why. We're gonna go check. He's gonna move here. We're gonna go check. He's gonna move here, and we're gonna go check. And we got the you know the same position, right? We force him in front of the pawn. Awesome. Looks like everything is working. We bring our king up. Now he's gonna come over here, and we're gonna do the same thing, right? Check. Let's say he goes here. Check. He goes here check all right awesome we got the same position everything looks good he has to go in front of his pawn right wrong now he goes here and guess what happens if we take the pawn yeah stalemate he's not in check but he can't move anywhere to draw right and so this is why hopefully you can see now c and f pawns you can't win because every time you get this position and he moves to the corner you can never take the pawn so you have to just keep checking him and your king can never, you know, come closer like it could with these pawns. Okay, so that's why C and F pawns are always going to be a draw. All he has to do is, is go to the corner whenever you get that position, right? This position right here, move to the corner, it's a draw. And here's an example of an A pawn and you're going to see something very similar happens here too. So let's say we try to do the same thing. We go check, he goes here, we go check, he goes here, check, he goes here, check, he goes here, check. He's got to move in front of the pawn, and now we can bring our king up, except we can't bring our king up because, again, it's a stalemate if we try to do that, right? So we got to do something with our queen. Check. He's going to go here. Check. He's going to go here. Check. 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 You see this the same problem, right? Check. Check. Every time we get this position, he goes there. Stalemate. So A, H, C, F pawns always will be a draw if they're advanced this far, unless your king is close enough that you can do some sort of a trick where you um, basically you let him get a queen and then you get checkmate. Uh, there's like a zone. I, I, I want to say it's something like this. I don't remember exactly, but it's roughly like this. If your king is that close, then there is a way to win, and it has to do with letting him get a queen. So basically, you would move your king forward, and he's going to get the queen. And then you can put him in check like this. And if you, let's say he moves back, you get this really crazy position where you move your king forward and it turns out that you're threatening checkmate like just by going here with your queen. And there's nothing black can do to stop you because you have you actually have a lot of checkmates. This is a checkmate threat, this is a checkmate, this is a checkmate threat. And he can't really do anything that's useful. So the only thing he can do is like sacrifice his queen somewhere just to delay the game, but he's still gonna get checkmated. So if your king is really close then you move it forward at just the right moment you let him get a queen and then this happens and you win otherwise if we go back um, if your king is further away like if your king's sitting over here you can't win it's always a draw with these pawns sorry with a c f and h pawns it's a draw unless your king is close enough all right so here's another position where both players have a queen and some pawns and black actually has an extra pawn so he's got five pawns and white only has four. But this position, I would much rather, and the engine agrees with me, white is, is much better. And there's two things that white has going for him that black does not. Number one, white's pawn is further advanced than, than black's pawn. So both of these are past pawns for black, but they're not very far advanced. White's pawn is three, three squares from queening, and it's white's move too. So you could play a six and you're two squares from queening. 
Very, very, very good thing. A lot of times in queen endings, the player with the furthest advanced pawn or, or furthest advanced pass pawn has the best chance of winning because all you have to do is put your queen here and you know it's supported by the queen. You can just go get another queen. It's, it's going to be very difficult for black to stop you. Black, you know, has too many moves to go, right? So that's a huge plus for white. The other thing that's really, really good for white is his king is has a, a nice little safe place to hide. Okay, this is huge in queen endings because the other part about queen endings if you, is if your king can't get safe most of the time because the queen is such a powerful piece, your, your opponent's just going to continue to put you in check and put you in check and put you in check. And a lot of times the games will end in a draw by, perpetu by perpetual check. So in this case, that's not going to happen. White, White's king is fine. Like black's queen can't do anything. So this is a fantastic position for white. Black is just losing. And also black's king is very exposed. Like if even if white wanted to change plans and come over here, I have checks here. I have a check here. It's going to be hard for black to ever get out of check right? Maybe if he, you know, runs this way, he can hide over here somehow with his queen. But even that, you know, there's going to be a diagonal here. There's going to be a diagonal here. I can come over here. It's really hard for black to hide. So big takeaway, furthest advance pawns, very important. If you can support them with your queen, a lot of times you can push them and get another queen. And then also keeping your king safe. If you have a, a place where you can hide and kind of tuck it away behind some pawns, that's really good. All right, the last position I'll show you is if you find yourself in a situation where you don't have a queen, maybe you lost your queen, but you got a couple of pieces for it. So like a rook and a bishop against a queen. Usually what you want to do uh, is set up some sort of fortress. So like in this example, we've got our king back here. Bishop is kind of guarding so the queen can't check us this way. It's also protecting the rook, which is defending the pawn over here. Everything's defended, right? That's kind of what you want to do. Just set your pieces on squares that are defended so that the queen can't attack them and take any of them and usually if you do this you're going to be able to get a draw even if the queen might normally be slightly better if you can set up a fortress like this there's not going to be anything that the queen can do and if you're playing with the queen against someone who has a fortress like this you want to try to create weaknesses so in this example you can't really do anything over here right you don't have enough pawns but maybe you could push these forward try to open up uh white's king and, and see what you can do. But if he plays it smart and kind of keeps this rook really controlling everything and, and uses the bishop as needed, it's gonna be really hard, most likely a draw. But just keep that in mind, like setting up a fortress when you're playing against the queen at the end of the game is usually your best chance to get a draw. And even if you had less pieces, you could still try to do something similar. So for example, let's say I moved here and, and blundered this piece, you could still you know, put your rook maybe on f4 here and try to you know keep it there to control those pawns over there, keep your king safe, maybe hide over here, and, and try to get a draw. You're probably gonna lose at this point because the queen against the rook should win, but you can make it much more difficult on your opponent by setting up some kind of fortress like this and just planning on hopping your king, you know, uh, back and forth, either up here, back here, move your rook kind of back and forth. That's gonna be your best chance. But as always, let me know if there's a question, comment. Um, but thanks for watching, stay sharp, play smart, and take care.